Hi, today we're going to talk about discovering the delays in your child's development. Um, we've talked earlier about how your nervous system controls and regulates, well, not only everything in your body, but also how it actually initiates and produces our child's development. Many of you have heard of the word milestones, so we're going to kind of go through that a little bit too, but keep in mind that the milestones are landmarks that go in sequestion, they go, they go in sequence from one to the other. Each one needs to be completed before the next one starts. That's how we get to the potential of our developments. So here's what you need to know. Let's do a scenario on a brand new baby, fresh out of the womb, day one if you will. What does a baby need to do? What is the skill set that a brand new baby needs to have? You know, not a whole lot. Basically, a gut and the ability to suckle at the breast. So they gotta have some movement control so they can find the breast, obviously so they can move their mouth. Again, that's motor or muscle control. And then they need to be able to process the milk through their gut with an end result of being a, a good pooper. So if our children from day one are taking to the breast or taking to food of any kind, we prefer the breast of course, so does nature, and then their gut is sufficient to process that food, producing of course uh, poop, then we know we're starting well. This is the first developmental stage that our children go through, which is basically gut and digestion. If that process goes successfully, and our children really develop that first transition, that first milestone to its potential, then the next milestone can then start to occur, and that's immunity. So a lot of clients of mine, a lot of people that I've talked to, in a way are having challenges with their two or three year old with ear infections or, or even you know UTIs or any kind of infection, even more common colds or just they, you can just tell that they're not really you know finding their way through life even early in this world of immunity it all results back to the gut if the gut is healthy and functioning well even though their immunity is very limited at the very beginning so you got to give grace to that but eventually it should catch up certainly in that second year to where they really are very very prone to not get an infection they should have so much robust immunity that they can come in contact with a cold virus or come in contact with another bacteria that's just harmful for their body and then they actually can be winners. Now, we also need to put in there um, that we do want our children to have multiple small infections. You know, we want them to have some indication that their body is fighting bacteria or fighting virus because that is, of course, how we develop, you know. I never did like the phrase, but Jack LaLanne coined it years ago, and I'm a fan of his, and it says, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So, in physiology, when you do anything, exercise or ice plunges or even a child going through a viral infection, if you do any of these things right up to the point, but not into damage, your body will grow stronger. So, as an adult, you probably understand that through exercise, it's pretty easy. If we look at the science of cold plunge and you know hot saunas and etc the same kind of thing we even talk about this in emotional psychology if you're really going through a challenge with yourself or your spouse or your family member you want to discuss these things and they're difficult but you don't want to cause damage but you want to go up to that point or where feel that you might because that's how we really find the solution so we want our children to go through multiple small infections but still feeling victorious, like it lasts a day or two at the most, and that will develop their immune system even greater. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how that first delay could happen. So when we look at challenges and milestones, or basically development, we have a big word for you. This is a, one of those you know $10 words, and it's called proprioception. Now, the word actually is descriptive in what it sounds like. It's the ability to perceive your body's position. So it kind of sounds like proprioception in a way, right? So with your eyes closed, I could tell that my elbow's bent without looking at it, or it's straight, or it's bent. We all know we can do that. It's the ability for your nervous system to perceive your body in space. So where are you? 
Now, if you're a gymnast or a dancer or an athlete, I mean, this is on the radar huge. You've got to know where your arm is for a good follow through. You've got to know where your body is for a good uh, golf swing. So proprioception is a very, very important part of our babies, our, literally our babies start. Because proprioception is the ability to understand movement of your muscles and joints. Most of the proprioceptive nerves are really found in the base of our skull. If you combine the base of our skull and the very, very bottom, the sacrum, that's literally about 80, 85% of all the proprioceptive nerves in your whole body. You have them everywhere, elbows, wrists, knees, hips, the whole bit, but the majority are in the bottom and the top of the spine. So nature gives us a lot of hints and a lot of clues. Since most of the proprioceptive nerves are found in those two regions, those are kind of the most two important regions of our body's neurological, not only development, but function even as an adult. So the very top and the very bottom of the spine is a key area for all neuro-based chiropractors to observe and to make sure it's healthy. So what would be our first delay? Even if it didn't show up until second or third, uh, two or three years, or maybe seven or eight years down the road, but the potential for our first delay comes when we have a subluxation, a spinal misalignment in the very, very upper neck, okay? In our world, we call that a subluxation. It's technically a birth injury. It shows up roughly, well, this is actually, I apologize. That chart says 97%, but it's 99%. I'll have to correct that. The osteopathic profession did research on this subject, and 99 out of 100 births show measurable dysfunction of the upper neck. They call that a somatic dysfunction, but basically it's pressure on the nervous system. In that same exact area is a nerve many of you heard about, it's called the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve travels out of the upper neck into the top two thirds of your colon. It's responsible for colon, heart, and lung function. It's a sensory nerve, which basically means it's an afferent nerve. It's picking up information from your body and delivering that information to your brain. Then your brain processes the information and adjusts its physiology, adjusts its behavior, so it can adapt to the situation you're in. If our newborn baby going through some birth trauma, which is, again, 99% of the time, disrupts that neurology, they can still, you know, be successful. They can still get on the breast. They can still have a poop. They can still learn to walk and crawl and etc. But they might be below their potential, which would then show up possibly in chronic infections like ear infections. It could show up in learning delays or in speech delays. These are all the things that manifest kind of down the road. So to kind of rewind a little bit of that, we want our brand new babies, certainly in that first year, year and a half, two years, to move a lot because movement is what drives the brain. Some, some studies have it at 90%, some at 70, but the point is, is that our brain gets most of its energy to operate, to develop and to grow and to just function from movement. One of the first delays that might happen in our children, again, that might not manifest until they're older, is subluxations in the upper neck negatively affecting their bodies to perceive movement, which alters movement, which slows down the piezoelectric for brain development. And our milestones are first gut and in to digestion, and then we got immunity. And then we got speech is gonna come up next after that, and our milestones are development. So if your concern is something further down the road, five or six years old, where they're really anxious, they're very nervous, they maybe have ADHD or anxiety, or speech delay is not showing up at the right time, um, or possibly they have chronic infections, this could all lead back to birth. It just didn't show up at the very beginning because of other mechanisms, but we really want to pay attention to that. <laughs> I sometimes want to apologize for all these $10 words. <laughs> Here's another one. Dysautonomia. Okay, so break it down. Dis means it's not working well. What's not working well? Autonomia. What is autonomia? Well, autonomia is basically your automatic or autonomic nervous system, okay? Again, guess where that's found, folks? Yeah, you guessed it, right in the upper neck, right in the base of the spine. In our hindbrain, our brainstem, that's where all that work is. The number one cause of dysautonomia, the autonomics not working at the potential, is against subluxation, which occurs in 99 out of 100 births. It's very, very, very common. The severity obviously is different, but it kind of always shows up. 
is simply a spinal misalignment. The nervous system gets concerned, your body perceives a problem, it protects itself with tension and fixation. Sometimes it's even hard to tell in a brand new baby or a young girl or young boy, I mean, but you can definitely tell. And then it affects the neurology. What happens is immediately you get a sympathetic increase. That's that fight or flight nerve, okay? So then your child is going to be less at ease. They're gonna feel concerned about their environment. They're not really fully understanding the environment, so they could be more irritable, they could be more talkative even, they could actually be even more clingy because they just need things that are calming. And what's more calming to a brand new baby? Mom, right? So they might be more clingy. That eventually disrupts the parasympathetics. Those are depleted during the high elevation of sympathetic, which is our vagus nerve, we talked about that earlier, affecting your gut. Now, in a baby, we don't see a ton of respiratory or heart symptoms. Those are gonna be really, really quiet. Eventually, I do see congestion or, or lung symptoms in a three or four year old. Basically, they're constantly congested or they're wheezing, those kind of symptoms. So don't think it's a disease of the lung. It doesn't have to be asthma. It could be the neurological connection to the depletion of their parasympathetic or their vagus nerve. So what we do in our office, even on brand new babies, we can do a nerve scan. The nerve scan is non-invasive. There's no needles, there's no radiation. I technically call it the no owie exam when I see my kids. But we can find it. We can find this neurological pressure or dysfunction. And we can measure it. But more importantly, we can take care of it. But just like anything you might do, and the easiest example is I want to learn to play the piano. It takes work, it takes repetition. But you also need to measure the benefits or the accuracy of your play. I guess sports is a good analogy for that too. So you have to be coached, you have to look at it again. How well am I playing the piano? I, it sounds good to me, but you need somebody to listen to it. Are you in the right pitch? Uh, you know, I, I think I'm throwing a ball good, but you need somebody to analyze your follow through or your connections, all these things that you do. So every 12 adjustments, we rescan the nervous system. So we measure it again to see its change. So we can process this change, if you will. We can process how well we're doing with our care, not just based on how your child feels, but how your child is functioning. So we really wanna make sure that all these developmental processes or milestones are at their full potential. So the most important thing to remember is we only get one window for these. We don't get two or three, we get one. So if we delay any of those, we're gonna have that deficit your entire life. And that could definitely manifest early. You can do it, but it's just not easy. So I want you to know that I'm really here for not only your concerns, but mostly for your potential. Dr. Jim Rolls, thank you for your time.